Hey everybody, Josh from Soka here with an exciting new product announcement. These guys right here in front of me. Today we are launching TPU inner tubes. That's right, TPU inner tubes. I will get to what you're thinking in a minute because if you listen to the Marginal Gains podcast or some of the previous uh, episodes of this show, um, you've heard me speak not so nicely about TPU inner tubes. Um, but here we are. Three new models. Uh, let's get that out of the way. We've got the 700 by 24 to 43 with 50 millimeter stem, 700 by 24 to 43 with a 70 millimeter stem, and then a 700 by 44 to 64. Uh, yep, 64. It's pretty big with a 50 millimeter valve stem. Um, Okay, let's dig in on the how and the why. Uh, clearly, these are different. If I don't like TPU tubes and I'm doing TPU tubes, it's because we saw an opportunity to fix a major problem in that market as we saw it, and uh, we've done it. So let's talk about why do I not like TPU tubes? Well, largely because they got me in a heap of trouble with my wife, and uh, I think as any married man can tell you, that is not a good place to be. Um, Two, three years ago, I bought for my whole family. Um, we all have e-bikes. We all commute to work and to school. My kids ride to school. My wife uh, commutes to the hospital. I ride to Silka. I put everyone on these orange TPU tubes because they saved roughly a pound per wheel of weight um, and they roll more efficiently. All good, right? The problem came that uh, these valve stem, plastic valve stems are undersized, so they don't always work how you want, or you just have to kind of like fiddle with your pump. Um, like if you have a hero chuck on your pump, you need to tighten it a little bit if you're using it on this guy. Uh, but then more so, within six months, all of them, every single one of them failed here at the flange. And why do they fail at the flange? Well, um, when you're Putting the pump on, it pushes away from the valve hole. Then the inflation pushes it down into the valve hole, um, which can be sharp on aluminum rims, some carbon rims, if you don't have uh, like a tubeless style tape, which our e-bikes are all tubes, so they didn't. And then when you remove the pump, that force st like starts to cut in here. And so every single one of them failed uh, at this flange within six months. My wife, Hers failed one week apart, both times at work, both times leaving her needing to be uh, picked up. Not good for me. Uh, you know, when you're rolling out after a 12-hour day at 7 p.m. and you're losing light, uh, yeah, fixing a flat on your 50-pound e-bike with panniers is not the place you want to be. Um, so I really struggled with these things. But then we got to do in some research and we realized, okay, one of the problems is that all of these guys are adding dye to the TPU. And, you know, adding dye to plastics does some weird things. The dyes actually can uh, reduce the peak elongation. They can reduce the ultimate tensile strength and the yield strength of the material. You know, kind of like we say with lubricants, you know, pink is not a lubricant. Um, fragrance, you know, the bubblegum smell is not a lubricant. Well, in this case... Uh, you know, pink and orange are not structural additives to these materials. At like 1% to get these bright, vivid colors, you're just reducing properties uh, in the material. We found we could make more efficient tubes by going with, you guessed it, clear, undyed, 100% TPU, TPU. So Silka tubes are pure TPU. No fragrance, no dye, no nothing. And we also realized that we could do a metal valve stem because the plastic valve stems don't work. This, you can see, is a rubber a TPU flange that pulls through uh, a hole in the TPU inner tube, and then it's glued, and they always fail at that flange. But Josh, you say, some companies have fixed this with a metal valve stem. Well, what they're not telling you with the metal valve stem is that they still use the plastic flange uh, at the base and then the metal is threaded into that. And in fact, these are the uh, Amazon low-cost Chinese ones. And uh, we bought a six-pack, and three of them were actually, we'll show this in close-up, pre-failed, pre-cracked, uh, where the metal was threaded in here. How do we solve it? We basically used a traditional tubeless-style valve, and we are sandwiching 
um, the, the TPU material between, ugh, making a mess here, between two aluminum discs. So the bottom of the valve has a flange. You can see in this image here, this cross section. And then as we zoom in on that cross section, you see we've got a flange. The TPU goes over top of that with a little bit of glue. We then thread down another aluminum flange over top of that, sandwiching the TPU material uh, with a protective uh, little disc here that protects from uh, any you know, rough edges that you may have at your valve stem. Um, but also this gives us a, this is a 10 millimeter flange. The largest valve holes can be by spec is nine. And so then we've got a little rubber flange on top of this. So you should only ever have the protective rubber gasket, then the aluminum flange, then the TPU material behind that. Um, these will not fail from prolonged use, they will not fail from pump uh, install and removal. They are so, so much stronger than traditional. And then we are doing a threaded valve with a nut because that nut then allows you to uh, sandwich the rim in between aluminum on the valve stem. And so no forces or loads from pumping or in, you know, if you're, you know, hand pumping, uh, you know, with a frame pump or a Tattico or something, uh, none of those loads, installing, removing, or pumping, will um, get to the TPU itself. It's all uh, held in the valve stem, which is now sandwiching the rim. This full construction also allows you to use electric inflators, which all of the uh, other brands say you can't use because why? Because they are essentially just force threading the Presta valve core into a piece of plastic and the heat from electric pumps will cause that interface to fail. Even these ones with the half aluminum, half plastic valve stem, the heat from an electric pump um, can cause it to fail at the base. What we recommend doing is filling up in about 15 PSI increments, giving it a break and then going back. Um, you know, you still can put quite a lot of heat into the valve stem with one of these, um, but you are if you go slowly, you will not fail the TPU at the bottom because uh, it is sandwiched in between aluminum. Where are we for efficiency? We talked about pure TPU versus dyed TPU. These guys test out within about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 watts of latex. So we're talking almost the efficiency of latex. Um, you know, that puts them about 0.6 to 0.8 watts faster per tube than these guys. Uh, and if you don't believe me, go look at BicycleRollingResistance.com. He has not tested silica tubes, but you will notice he's got a latex versus TPU. And the best TPU tubes are all clear, pure TPU. The lowest, uh, slowest ones are all dyed, colored TPU. That is not a coincidence. Um, this tech... We didn't invent it, we didn't come up with it. Uh, we just came up with the valve stem concept here. Uh, we are using TPU from Germany. These tubes are actually manufactured for us in Germany, not China. Um, so that is another, uh, I think really feeds to the quality of this product. And then the last piece here that is a major advantage, we are butt welding. Yes, I said butt welding. Um, all the 12 year olds out there will laugh because we all laugh when we say it here. We're butt welding the tube together using radio frequency. So essentially, if you've ever, uh, you think of putting the two ends of the tube together, and I always say it's like if you've ever done um, like downspout work on your gutters, right? You have two uh, tubes of the same size. They do not want to go together. To get the one inside the other, you have to create a little fold or a wrinkle. And what you see in these is that they all are glued together and you always have this little wrinkle uh, in there. Phil will give us a close-up on this. And that little wrinkle is filled in with glue. That is a common failure spot on these TPU tubes. Go Google it. You will find a ton of people out there talking about tubes that either uh, leaked when they very first installed them or started leaking shortly thereafter. The glue just is not as strong as the base TPU. It's also why the glue here is not so great. Um, with this, we actually pull the tube in, turn it back on itself. There's two radio frequency uh, horns, what they're called, and essentially go with this really high pitch sound and they are friction welded together. 
Uh, it's actually quite similar to the welding that we do uh, in the titanium on the Soka bottle cages, although that uses laser, but it gives you sort of a similar effect. Uh, this joint here is guaranteed airtight. They are 100% tested at the factory to be airtight. And if you uh, put it in a tensile test machine and put load on it, it is significantly stronger um, and has significantly higher elongation before failure uh, than this style of glued overlap. And that is what allows us to have two sizes of tube in a space where others might have three or four sizes of tube. These can handle much higher elongation, again, due to the lack of dye and due to the way they are welded together. Um, you also, when you're inflating to these very large sizes, not having this big glued disc area to put stress in the tube um, allows you, uh, allows us to cover a much broader range uh, per tube size. So there you have it, uh, made in Germany, hyper-efficient, the most efficient, 100% aluminum valve stem, um, patented uh, valve interface. I mean, this really is a game changer and improvement in this category. I think you will see it. Um, they're extremely light, between half, third to half the weight of a butyl tube. They fold up super, super small. I mean, let's pull 24 to 43. Here, let's pull the big one out, and you can see, um, you know, this covers all the way up to like a you know 29 by two and a quarter, and you can see there's just almost nothing to it. Oh, and this reminds me, every one of these ships with an alcohol swab and a TPU patch. So if you are using these as a spare, this is essentially two spares. You can use the tube, and then if the tube gets a flat, you can actually patch the tube with the included uh, swab and patch. And literally the alcohol will like clean and activate the area. You put the patch on, it's done. It's like a five, 10 second tops patching of the tube if you need to do it. Every one of these comes with the patch and the swab. So there you have it. What are your thoughts? Uh, sounds like we solved the problem with TPU tubes. I think so, but uh, let me know your thoughts. Questions below, be sure to hit like and subscribe and we will see you next time.